completely forget what to say at all. Um, say okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I know. Okay. Uh, episode 14. Okay. Uh, starting. Three, two, one. Hello, and am I speaking? You are speaking. Oh my god. You're speaking through your mouth. How do you know if you're not speaking? How can you I don't not know. I tell panic. If you're speaking I, if I sometimes you're panic when I speak. Through your mouth. Okay. No, I can't stop laughing. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to episode 14 of the TG podcast. Uh, today, I'll be accompanied by my uh, co host, 100 Ninjas. Yes, that is me. With our guest today being Subma Doge. Well, it's me. nice to see you on the opposite end of the table. How are you today? I'm doing kind of okay. I missed the podcast by like half an hour. Uh, Somebody thought that, the world great. turned left instead of right. It, it does turn left. It's been a big conspiracy. The government see, is trying he... to get you to believe that the world turns right. For what purpose? Control. For monetary gain. You know, if Amazing. the world spins right instead of left, then uh, uh, world billionaires get more money. That's how it works. Don't Google it. Mm-hmm. I'm right. Yeah, you're they, very right. Ev- every no, day, you're, you're very every left, single day right. that the world turns left instead of right, Bezos gets like some taxes off. Okay. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, they, uh, they starting off with like trillions off of the world turning left, and everyone is blind to it. They don't actually, see that it, it uh, actually it turns left. left. That's how he was able to go into space. It because, was. like, rockets, they don't work if it's going right or something like that. Yeah, if, if the world turns right, they just shut off. Everyone knows this. Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah, well, starting off... Understand. Welcome back to the conspiracy cast. <laughs> They will be discussing the world turning left and nothing more. Amazing. I guess we should start with uh, the classic TG podcast question. How did you find out about the server? So I found out about the server. I was trying to think what else happened because it was July 20th. So I think there was another post that was going around on the subreddit. But I'd actually known about the server since December of 2019 when it first launched. Uh, because of the auto mod on the bottom of every single r slash teenagers page, there was a, a moderator that would talk about uh, an auto moderator that would talk about the r slash teenagers Minecraft server. But I never could play because I was playing on uh, Bedrock on the Xbox. Yeah. And around, yeah, it took me a few months to realize all the way to June, which was uh, just last month, a year ago, uh, I figured out that. I first of all had ability to use Bedrock on the PC because I had inherited that through some force or reason. I don't remember how I got Bedrock on the PC, but I, I had Bedrock. And if you went to the server page and you scrolled all the way down, which it's not like a, a very scrollable page, like there's just like five or six icons. So it doesn't look like you can scroll, but you can scroll. And if you scroll, there's a button that you can press to put in an IP. Yeah, I I only noticed that when I realized you could join servers on Bedrock because of the TG, the TG server. Yeah, so I figured that on Bedrock you could put in servers. So I joined back in July on Bedrock on 1.15. And it was not very fun playing on Bedrock uh, because of all the broken stuff. But that's how May I... May I ask quickly out. what your Bedrock username was? I It was... Well, I forgot how you say it. How do you, in question, how do you say this? Is it just star? Uh, that... What's it called? Like a, not, not asterisk. apostrophe. Uh... An asterisk. Asterisk, so, yeah. Asterisk Submodoge. That was yeah, my name. Oh, oh, I see. Because I just recently changed it uh, on Xbox. It used to be emp2468, but I changed it to Submodoge. And uh, that has just been my name since. Yeah. I mean, Thanks. yeah. You're one of the few players that has played on both uh, Bedrock and Java. So after the switch, how how did it feel to switch? And what do you think about uh, uh, people always making jokes and uh, talking shit about uh, randos? Oh, no, not sorry. Not randos, about Bedrock players. I mean, rando, Bedrocky, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> but 
Oh, true. Yeah, first of all, I switched from Bedrock to Java, not because of all the benefits, but simply because Java had shaders, and I liked shaders. <laughs> so, I got the most Java expensive for shader that pack. Mm -hmm, well, that yeah. is a benefit. Yeah, so I I got that just for the shaders, and because people don't realize, I play with shaders 24-7. I never take them off. And, I <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm sorry. That's but a little strange. The, the, game, the game looks great. So I did that, but a lot of things I didn't realize, I mean, I could play the game normally. Because usually on Bedrock, there is a lot of issues that are just really difficult to, to get across. Like when I started playing on 1.15, if you, if you went into a house, so if you, if you imagine a house, uh, it's got four walls, a ceiling above you that is three wow. blocks up. So right at your head is a block. And if you go forward and open a chest or a furnace or a crafting bench, it will place that block above you and destroy the block above you. What? Well, that makes sense, I guess, because, you know, Minecraft. I don't Minecraft. know why that happens. But every time I went to my house and opened up a chest, the ceiling would disappear. Okay. And I would place a block there to fix it. And the block would just disappear. And like, if I, if let's say I, I had an andesite, no, I had an acacia slab ceiling, and I put a block of andesite there, my andesite block would disappear, and the texture would change to an acacia slab. Okay, that I, makes I, no sense, but okay. It does. I do not get how bedrock players are willing to play on the server that's this bad. And okay. that is an inconvenience, <laughs> because you can't even use smithing tables, and for a long time, not even enchanting tables. You cannot use them. <laughs> Just simply, it would not let you. Why did you continue playing if it was that bad? Because I had never played on a server before, and I thought this was just regular server stuff. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> and I thought this was something that everyone had to go through. <laughs> but no, it's just Bedrockies. So ah, it, nah. And well, uh, yeah, with the smithing table thing, I eventually realized it was a bedrock thing. So I had to ask a Java player to make me netherite armor because I couldn't do it myself. And oh I yeah, to... I think I remember someone mentioning that. It yeah, been like balance arrow or something. Mm -hmm. So like I had to pay Java players to take my diamond gear and the netherite ingot and put them in a table for me, and they they wow. made a lot some really? money off of that. <laughs> and to, to do anything, I mean, you had to have a job player. I mean, writing books, you can you can't write books on Bedrock. That's just something you can't do. You have to get a Java player to do it for you. So it's it, it's infuriating a lot of times just playing the game. And with what you said before, I mean, uh, people that are very against Bedrock, and I mean, it's a joke, but I mean, racism against Bedrock is it's. It's difficult because I mean the server is against you. The server is actively trying to get rid of you, and with, mm -hmm. when the rest of the community and the rest of the server is also trying to get rid of you, it, it's just difficult and it's it's hard to get around and do anything. And after when I got Java, I mean it's the same as ever, how everyone else plays, and you can get all these. You, know, you can use a smithing table. You can use everything. Another thing that happened on Bedrock when you scaffolded like to the left or up or anything it would just remove like five blocks that you just placed so like on 1.15 on amplified when you're trying to make bridges across these land masses so you don't die you would just fall anyway and still die so you know on java i mean you could do that so it was it was it was really difficult playing on bedrock so java had a lot of benefits to it and it was, yeah i do not it was understand how people like shadow pig or mitchell pup play for this long on bedrock like that and uh, i know i know specifically for mitchell pup i think it's out of spite uh but <laughs> for like other play players uh like on uh, i saw on the teenager server I and mean, people just can't buy a pc or they they can't buy java and it's just yeah i get that but like i mean at that at that point it might just be easier to find like because bedrock servers do exist. I don't get why people don't just play on those. I mean, would you rather play on TG or Hypixel? I mean, you're not going to get this kind of community with it. I mean, you're not going to have this 
I would Fun. rather play on PG because it's got 1.1617 PvP. No, no, but like there are like just normal survival, uh, normal SMPs for bedroom. Not, not really. There, there's not a lot to choose from or to look from. And from what I know, you can like easily. Uh, I mean, for, yeah, there's a lot of server hosters for Bedrock Edition. There are, but I mean, it is difficult, I mean, especially with the realms, because I think realms is, works so much better than servers do on Bedrock, and uh, yeah, it's I guess, yeah, it's, I... and it, it's just that there's a lot, of, there's a lot of issues coming up with it, and for I, mean, I for Bedrock servers, I mean, they're, I mean, Java servers are just better. Yes, and they, they have the larger communities, they, they better support. So I, I can see why people, Bedrock players, go to TG more and those Java servers. But, yeah, I, I'm not too entirely sure why they don't do Bedrock instead. I mean, with the amount of times you died, uh, how did rollbacks work? Because, I mean, like on uh, Bedrock, it's not going to be really easy to record stuff all the time. Especially About if you're like, that, on a phone or Switch. Yeah, I didn't know rollbacks were a thing. Oh god, I, I do not know how you played. Like, you must have died a lot. I did, and I lost everything multiple times. Uh, because I just didn't know how things work. I mean, it took... I played on 1.15, I'd say for about, like, 20-so hours, maybe two days. And it took me into, like, 15 hours in to realize that the Nether Hub was the same. So... Like, I had lived in Ghost Town for a while, and I had to walk back from spawn all the way to Ghost Town, because I didn't know the hub exists. So I had to go, like, 1,500 blocks all the way over there every time. And God, I had to, the same thing for Anarchy. I had to just walk back. So, it, it was difficult, but I mean, I may do. And I think that's what a lot of Bedrock players do. I mean, it's difficult to play on the server and difficult to do all that, but, I mean, it still works. Mm -hmm. you're still there yeah i guess that's some commitment playing yeah. like that mm -hmm. I personally would have providing... up right away some of is providing the inside look into the lives of bedrock players yeah you should make a documentary about this <laughs> yeah the, the lives of bedrock new tg media show definitely won't be cancelled <laughs> Like every TG other TG media show. Try not to get cancelled challenge. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't had a single successful. Yeah, not one. Not even one. I, yeah, we had the podcast. I mean, that's a pretty successful a show. A podcast, I'd that's... That's not a other show. Than that. Yeah. It's a podcast. And honestly, doesn't really require that much preparation. Like all of, like someone wants to make a PvP a pet. Yeah, it requires a lot of preparation, like setting a time and you know being there on time. That Amazing. would be yeah. that, great preparation. That's some real commitment, man. Mm. All right. Um, okay, so moving on, uh, some questions from uh, the TG podcast watchers. Uh, okay, watchers is a weird. Anyway, uh, Listen, what viewers advice... like you? <laughs> <laughs> viewers viewers like you listening to this um what advice would you give to new players coming to tg new commerce coming to tg what advice would i give i'm not actually too sure i mean definitely what what i did for tg and what i think a lot of people should do is to to be well known and to really get into the server is all you need to do is just talk to people a lot. I mean, you just gotta go into like superiority Discord or just in chat and just talk to people. I mean, you don't need to make like a, a massive town to be well known or do something crazy. All you need to do is just talk to people, and I think that that worked a lot for me and could work for you. Uh, uh, this could happen to you. Mm -hmm. Also. I mean, yeah. Like, probably mm -hmm. don't make a town on like your second week of the server. That would be good. Good advice I would give. Uh, just just play the server and I mean just relax a little. You don't need to do everything all at once. 
because I think that's what I tried to do, and it did not go very well for me. Drugs, um... I mean, yeah, most of the appeal of the server right now is, like, you're known, you have friends on the server, that's what makes the server so itself. Mm -hmm. If you don't become friends with people in the community, you're going to end up leaving quite quickly because it's just yeah. not fun. You can there's, only do so many things before. Yeah, there's really nothing to come back to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've got like all these towns like Snowden Town and Steam Town that, I mean, they, they've got. Snowden like, a town from Undertale. It is a town on It's also a town of 1.17. I've been there. Amazing. It, but you just get all these towns. I mean, on one point sixteen, you got Lavender Town, uh, Brug Town, Bra Town, uh, Bonk Town. Town, and there was a lot of B starting towns. Uh, but all of these ones that just had like one or one house and didn't have anything else because people kept trying to go to do too much too fast, and I think that that's an issue that a lot of new players face. If a, if a town has one house, is it considered a town? In my eyes, yes. I, I, if, it's, if it ends in the word town or city, then it is probably a town. Interesting opinion. At well, least for, um, the, for the wiki, because I gotta what, document everything. <laughs> what server changes... What changes that Muzak or the mods could make to the server that would make it more interesting for randos to play on? Like, more in to make it more interesting for them to play on the server and to make it more likely for them to stay longer? That is a great question uh, for, for randos to, to play longer. I... I don't think it's really something that the mods can do. I I think it's more of a community change that we need to make or to just be nicer to randos. I mean, when people join, I mean, they're harassed a lot. I mean, to do slash hub slash suicide leaderboard slash Rick. And I think, I mean, when the you join a server and the server actively wants you to leave, I mean, a lot of people are leaving, and I feel that it's more of our problem to try to get people to join and stay. Because with the mods, I don't think there's really anything they could do that would allow new players to stay longer, that would get them more invested in the server. Because the reason they're leaving, I believe, is our fault. And if we don't change, then they're just going to keep leaving. And do you think there's anything about... The server mechanics or economy or like the general structure of it that could make it more difficult for people to play that would make it for more difficult uh well i mean for the economy you could just make diamond spawns less and i mean that would completely destroy the economy uh yeah so it still wouldn't fix a problem if there's less money people just have you know lower prices and diamonds will just be worth more that's not really Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. It's not too sure. I'm not too sure. I, um, I I forgot the term. I'll stay silent. Okay. Um, what would you say is your grave greatest achievement in your uh little over a year on the server? Well, I mean Grogstown, obviously. I don't think Anything I've done has ever come close to the success that Grogstown had and uh, what a time I had with it. I mean, Grogstown, I think, was one of the best experiences I've had on TG. What about, and... like, TG Media? And... Like, not, that say, not so, saying you're wrong, but... So, Grogstown, back to Bleak. Grogstown. I, it was Bleak. just a, a, great, a great experience I had, and it was a lot of fun working with all these new players and getting them up on the ground and working on this town together and forming a nice little community around it. And I mean, I guess also somehow become the CEO of TG Media is kind of cool, but not as cool as Grog's Town. I just worked on the arch a bit. I mean, that was pretty big. I think like on, on single largest project I've worked on, I think the arch, I mean, that, that was pretty big. I made like a third of that. I haven't really done much on TG Media, I don't think. If I think it, it, TG Media would still be in the same place it were today if, if I still wasn't even here. 
Okay. Um, I mean, you're also quite known as being the historian of server, the, the historian of the server. So how has that been? The experience of documenting everything and updating the wiki. It, I think it's been nice to try to get everything on the server and that's physical on the server down on paper so that people later on can know what happened or people even today know what has happened or what has happened in the past. Because stuff like the TGN wiki, it's just, it's not very good. If you go on the TGN wiki, everything's outdated. Most of the information is just plain out wrong, even for the time. So yeah. I yeah. I don't really know anything that happened on TGN because there's nothing there. There's no information to view. And a lot of this history is being lost because no one actually knows what happened. And there's no documentation of what happened. So if Koopal had never made the wiki, I mean, people wouldn't even have known what happened at 1.15 or even now 1.16, 1.17 because the stuff isn't being documented. So to be able to document all of this stuff so people know what ha has happened, know what's been going on. It's been a great experience to try to get all this down and to get more people in the know, I guess, of the server's history and lore. Are there lore. any secrets or very or not very well-known things you found out while uh, documenting all these? I mean, I found like stuff that no one else has ever found that no one cares about like the clan shimado fortress uh right by the astral wall that someone built i think it was palm v2 built and it's this giant japanese style fortress that has a horse on the bottom floor that is asking if anyone knows this horse and on the top floor is this dog called uh shogun shimano and if you put your name on the wall and take an emerald from the chest, you become a samurai. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty epic. That was pretty epic. Uh, there's also the Apocrypha Crusaders. I think that they were a pretty cool group that no one else really knows about. Uh, but yeah, they were this group on 1.16 that their whole kind of basis for making a town or a group or whatever was not to make like a, a stable residence where they all had this one home they could all return to. Rather to go between all the major towns like Grogstown, Superiority, Spirit City, and to make a base there where they would move homes and share materials between people and they would like uh, go over and get randos into their group and get more and more people to grow larger to just share materials with each other and like this big communist state that had bases all over the server. And it was, this it, it, was, it was it was like this really big I this really big thing that started to happen and it was a really cool idea, but it never really got anywhere. But they made a base in between Grogstown and Stall Town, like day three. It's been there since well, it had been there since forever. And they made one near Redemption as well. They had a mansion outside Redemption. And finding out about those guys was really cool. And no one else really knows about them because no one cares. Uh, but they're pretty cool. I don't know what else is the cool, obscure fact about the server. Uh, Oreo Town, that was another place that was really cool. But most people know about Oreo Town, right? I've never heard of it. Oh, so Oreo Town was this town of 1.16 that was built. It was like this giant stick in the ground in the middle of, well, just off the coast. It was in the ocean of this big stick and it had these two massive discs that went around it and that had the houses on them. And it was by far, I think, one of the coolest places on the server. And it was this town that they would give housing to anyone that came by and it grew into a decently sized town like 12 15 people before the server owner just disappeared and it became abandoned but even and it was still pretty cool and even during anarchy i mean it wasn't griefed and it well, it was a pretty cool place i think that's, that's everything i could think of now there, there's a lot of obscure stuff <laughs> Like all of the the books and so I mean, there's all these different mythos and history to all these books, and no one has read them. Uh, like two Voodoo BR, 
which has nothing to do about Voodoo VR, and it's actually about Loomis going on an archaeology exhibit, like, uh, what, journey or whatever, and he learns about the secret power to fight people with guns, and it's a really weird book that I don't think anyone else has read. So there's just, there's just a lot of obscure stuff. Hmm. Interesting. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about the 1.16 cartel? The the cartel. I I actually that that was how I found out about that. So Titanium Cow invited me. No, he didn't invite me. He dragged me into a a, a group chat and said, "You're part of the cartel now. Make a base." So that that's how I found out, and I had to make a base. We we went on a tour. I think it was me, DTI, and Tit, and we made a base inside the old uh, FEA tunnels, and we just made a base there and started off the cartel. How did you feel about the cartel's growth? I think the cartel was a really cool project that had a lot of potential that went unused most of the time. Uh, because, I mean, the cartel slowly had growth. It had bases in Urn, Grogstown, Seatown, and Superiority that went untouched. Uh, we sold, sold drugs, alcohol, weed, cocaine, and illegal map arts in Superiority. And Amazing. I we did a lot of business. I think it, it went really well. But I I still left it feeling disappointed. Uh, I we because we built this this giant drug empire. We sold to all the masses, and that's all we did. All, all we did was sell, the, and nothing really came of it. So I I'd say that there was a there was a lot of growth, and it was really fun being part of that growth. But it feels like there was a lot more that it could have been that it never became. Are you planning on making a 1.17 variation of this? Or is I mean, that... I, I mean, Titanium owns the cartel, so I mean, it's it's all about to him. Mm, uh, okay. But I... I don't know. You gotta ask uh, Tit. He's the one that, that controls the cartel. I always thought you were the one of the heads of the cartel. I was one of the heads of the cartel, because I was, I was the one that did everything. I, I made all the bases. <laughs> I made all that, the drugs. I I did everything. <laughs> that seems like, yeah, that seems fair. Mm -hmm. Tit isn't really known for doing much. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a great time. If, if Tit wants to make another one, yeah, I might join it. Cool. Okay. Also, uh, also just posted a new fanfic to the subreddit that I've been working on a while. Just in case. You awesome. Want to see that. How did you get into writing books and like fanfics? I'm not actually too sure. I I I can remember that the first book I ever read on server was the TG Manifesto, which was a really weird book to read because I was on Bedrock, I was in Grog Sounds in my home, and Titanium Cow just starts shouting to, to do slash spawn. So everyone went to spawn, and he was there riding a horse without a saddle. So he was aimlessly going around on a, a horse around spawn and started throwing books at people. And that was quite the experience to, to behold. But I, I got that book, and I... I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a cool concept to, to write books on the server. And the second one I got right away was the Mod Father. The Mod Father, another one of the a really cool book on the server. And the first book I ever wrote myself uh, was Poor El Libro, which I wrote because I was really I was really angry with everything that had been happening on the server with Grogstown. And looking at other towns, especially Bacontown, because uh, Bacontown I thought looked really cool, and they completely changed all of their rules to better fit Superiority's rules. 
And there was, I was looking at a lot of different rounds. Time. I think Urn as well, it had a really carefree structure and it started to turn its rules to more fit superiority's rules. And it seemed like every town that I'd come across had this cool, like, little rule set that they, they made all revolved around the town, what they wanted to do with the town. And they changed it to fit superiority rule set because that was the rule set that worked. And in Grogstown, I was, people were constantly telling me that the, the way that I had made Grogstown, that you could build anything, anyone can come in and anyone can find shelter, that that was wrong. I needed to change that to better fit. Oh, yes, Spirit City as well. They had another rule set that anyone can build there and they changed Spirit's rule set. But people kept telling me that I need to change Grogstown's rules to better fit superiority's rules. And I I was just tired of it. So I wrote an entire manifesto dedicated to why I didn't like everyone switching their rules to superiority rules. And that's what did kind of okay. Cool. Well, that's, uh, and then and then I wrote like six other ones, but no one cares about those. No. <laughs> Can you give us um, a brief description of each of them, or would that take too long? Uh, well, I mean, sure, I, I, can, I can talk about those. So, the second one that I wrote... What was the second one that I wrote? I'm going to visit my own wiki real quick. Because I, I can't remember basic information about myself. Awesome. I'm not gonna look at the wikis for those those books because I, I I I hope I remember what actually happens in those books because I remember I don't like a majority. Oh, a war worth fighting for, of course. Okay, so a war worth fighting for is a book about this this guy in the future of one point sixteen. So one point sixteen has gone on. It ended, but anarchy never happened. So anarchy oh, cool. didn't happen, and everyone left. And this new race of people came into the world to inhabit what was left of 1.16. And everyone joined the major towns like Urn and Superiority and Sea Town. It was a major those. town. Yeah, Urn had like 70 something citizens. It was massive. Oh. Uh, but everyone had joined those towns, but no one joined Grogstown. So this one, this one dude, what was it called? Denim? I think it's called Denim, which is really close to the word denim, and I don't know why. But so Denim, uh, he decide his parents live in Urn, and for some reason he doesn't like his parents. I don't know why, and so he wants to completely destroy the entire city of Urn to do so. But he needs motivation, so the motivation he finds is World War Urn, which he's kind of heard about but doesn't understand. So he's going to destroy all of Urn because of this. So he goes to Urn and dies. And what? that was the book. That, that seems that was, like had a depressing ending. It is. I, I've killed most of my main characters because I don't want to deal with them. <laughs> so he, he goes to Urn and dies. That's it. That is oh. the entire book. And that is... It, it's a pretty terrible book. I, I've got to say, there is, there's not a lot of motivation. It... I mean, that, that's really, it, it goes too fast, it, the pacing is all off, and it's just kind of terrible. I think if you can recognize your mistakes as a writer, that just makes you better at it. Well, so... if, I, if I recognize the mistakes in all of my books, I don't think that makes me <laughs> any Well, better. I mean, it depends how you look at it. They're all mistakes. <laughs> so, the next one is Reception. Reception's gotta be one of my favorite books. But I, I do see a lot of issues with it. So that one, it, it follows the ca character Myra. She's a bread baker, but no one's buying bread from her. So she has to get a new job. So she she becomes a receptionist at TG Media because they're paying enough to, to get her debts fixed. Because she bought a netherite hoe from a, a floor tentacle. And the floor tentacle is trying to evict her, maybe try to kill her. It's, it's a kind of unknown, kind of vague. But Floor is trying to kill her. So she's trying to get money to pay off Floor so she isn't killed in her sleep. So she goes to TG Media. And VTD is there. He to, to try to impress the new receptionist 
He goes to the top of the skyscraper and tries to elytra fly down, but he accidentally hits into the side of the TJ Media office and dies. VTD does? He does. He does. He dies in that one. He does. Yeah. Uh, so then Hypesy comes out of nowhere, meets Myra, and he is basically insane. Uh, okay, so, so he, no different than normal Hypesy. Yeah, so the regular Hypesy, uh, he plays a, a laugh track because he has a soundboard that he just carries around with him and plays a laugh oh. <laughs> and plays a laugh track at VTD's death. He oh shows Myra to, to the receptionist office and tells her to pick up the phones, but there's no phones there. And when she tries to question it, he he just leaves and, and says not to go into the podcast office. And so she just goes home. She finds money on inside of her home to, to, for her pay for that night. She goes back the next day. The police come and, and try to, to, to ask her to to get Hypesy, if she can recognize Hypesy, they give her pictures. Like, yeah, that's that's the guy up there in the tower. So they all go to the tower. All of them die. Hypesy comes down, kills Myra. And that's the entire book. You really like to kill off your characters. They, they do. They die a lot. So the only reason I like Reception is because I kind of like Hypesy. Hypesy's a cool character. But, but besides that... Again, there's nothing really alluding to anything that happens in the second half of the book. And it, the pacing on it is just all weird. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's just, it's terrible. So SCP-0032 is just an explanation of what hypes he is, and that's it. Uh, the Cartel, that was a book that I, I'm really not a fan of now. Uh, when the Garfield cartel started, uh, when that all started, uh, I had this idea for the cartel taking over superiority, and that never actually happened because they declined. They didn't want to be taken over. Uh, you but... asked them if they wanted to be taken over, and I, they I, said, no thanks. I, I did. We, we asked Murdoch if we could ta if we could own the Swag Cathedral. And he said no, so we decided not to take over superiority. So that was really sad. We were gonna put like Garfield flags everywhere and stuff, but it never happened. Uh, but when when I joined the cartel, I kept having this idea of a lot of the scenes that happen in the book. Uh, of a lot of what happens in that book, I had imagined what what the cartel would be doing. So I just put all of that on paper, and then I also decided to make a a prequel to the Mod Father for whatever reason. Uh. But right after I wrote that book and the next book, The Reconstitutor, I watched The Godfather, which is what The Modfather is based on. Right. And I realized that those books, in the context of The Godfather and The Modfather, they don't make any sense. So, in the cartel, the, 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 the Garfield cartel is trying to take over all of superiority to show all the other nations that they could destroy them if they wanted to. So don't interfere with our business. We're going to keep selling drugs and whatever. So the first thing, it starts out with Bimo saying that everyone's going to be killed. So Bimo runs away. Bimo dies. Uh, Ted shoots oh. him. Uh, cut to Mario. Mario Foley. Oh, wait, no. Never mind. Don't cut to Mario Foley. He's, he's still back there. So over there at the Swag Cathedral, where all the leaders are meeting, Bimo was there. Bimo is no longer there. Uh, but Zhao is there. Zhao is saying something along the lines that Mario is, that the cartel's pretty safe. Mario's over by the Carrot Tower, trying to get rid of the last of the resistance of superiority. So Tit tells CFDL to go tell Mario to, instead of going through the tower and getting rid of everyone to just blow up the entire tower. So then cut to Mario. Mario is going through the tower. He's he's infiltrating and eliminating as uh, was said prior. Uh, but then CFDL runs in. He gets shot like a dozen times, runs in, tells them to blow up the tower, but he can't move because he's been paralyzed now because he's been shot a dozen times. So him, Mario and his group, they make a trolley to carry CFDL around, and they set the entire tower to explode. 
So then they they run out of the tower. Uh, CF Dale falls out of the trolley, so they just abandon him. And oh, shit. they do. It, it's quite sad. And they just they run out. They, they hide behind the bridge. The tower bl- bl- blows up. Well, no, actually, they, they go behind the bridge for safety. They prepare for the tower to explode. They realize the tower is not actually going to explode for a while. So they go to get CFDL back again, but then the tower explodes and he, he's very dead. Uh, and then they go back to the Swag Cathedral where all the, all the leaders are meet, meeting, and Mario's promoted to something like a, a leader. I, I forgot. And that's the end of that book. And it was kind of okay. Because I really liked how that I wrote that book. I think it was written pretty well. The pacing was all right. But in the context of what a cartel is supposed to be, it doesn't make any sense at all. So I hate that book, actually. Even though it's got a lot of great things, it's just bad. So The Reconstitutor is one of the worst books here. Because it was a, it was a rushed version of me trying to connect the cartel and the Godfather together, and not the Godfather, the Modfather, uh, to make it a bit more seamless, but it just did not go over well. So in that book, Mario's at the Swag Cathedral, meeting with all the other leaders again, and Tit says them that they need to find Nino, because Nino owns the town. If they have Nino, they control the city. And they figure out he's in the, like, the, under, the underworld, or the underneath, or whatever it's called. And he's underneath the city. So Mario has to go under the city. He finds Nino. And, well, he accidentally kills Nino, but brings him along. Uh, takes him back up. Finds out that everyone he brought there is also gone. So, goes up, back to the Swag Cathedral. Uh, tits in a duel with a man in a cloak. Tit loses the duel. Or man, in, man in cloak. Uh exposition time everyone in the cartel is dead and it's being moved over to the illinois Sic- Sic- sicarios which is the the gang from the mod father oh, i see so because of all that exposition at the end it was just really rushed it doesn't make any sense at all and i feel like i really wish i could have rewritten that book and made it different actually the last book the one that i mean i had a lot of uh, put a lot of time in is uh, TG's Bizarre Adventure, which actually just came out now. Uh, which I helped write that. The the actual credited writer is Pixel because Pixel wrote all of that. They did a great job with it. Uh, but what now? What it is right now? Uh, it's supposed to be a story that is right uh, going off in tandem with TGN's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, and goes over a group of FBI agents trying to stop Oblivion, because Oblivion's goal is to try to kill every major leader in the United States to turn the entire United States into an anarchy zone. <laughs> and the FBI group is trying to stop them. So what the first... The, and that's really it. I, I can't really say more, because the first chapter does not reveal much. But that, that's what that story's about. And I, I've, I've had a lot of put a lot of work into that. So that that's everything. That that's all the books I've written. Cool. Quite I think, some lore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a very interesting segment of the podcast, in my opinion. <laughs> it was. How how long did that go on for? That that was. I'd long. say a good ten fifteen minutes. Right. right. Well, now we've burned some time. <laughs> yeah um actually there is another question from our listeners i think our listeners is a good word well, yeah because you don't view a podcast you listen to it yeah. viewers um, like yeah. you <laughs> yeah viewers like you listening right now mm-hmm. um someone is asking uh do you if you like what the mods and uh admins did with the custom terrain and if you don't like what they did uh what would you have done differently I, I've actually not been too big of a fan of the custom terrain because I think that the world is a lot harder to digest. It, it's a lot because I mean, it was 1.16. I mean, I only spent like a few days there and I could already like in my head map out most of the map and know where everything is and pinpoint its location. But with the custom terrain, I don't know where anything is at all. 
and the biomes are really expensive. I don't know where to get anything, like dark oak wood. I didn't know what biome I would go for that, because Dark I didn't know what, what... Perhaps. yeah, but does that exist? I don't yes. know. Like, like, do mesas exist? Yes. And if they exist, do they have all the terracottas? Yes. Okay, well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, but, like, uh, it's still but... not very easy for people to know. Like, no, if I they know. Said... I'm just I'm answering his questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, if they had some kind of... If they told us what plug-in or showed us what biomes... Or, like, yeah, what it... do you think about the... Because not only the biome, but the... What do you call it? The naturally generated structures have been changed. What do you think about those? Do you like them? They they're pretty cool. Uh I think that it I I'm I'm kind of half and half with them because I mean there's just so much new. It, it's just kind of hard to the digest, you know, I, again. Uh but like I have a in my old house before I got my my Perry house, I had this just big pyramid right outside my door. I mean, that was pretty cool. And mm -hmm. you got like all these boats everywhere and uh like but that's really the only two I've seen. Like, do Guardian farms change? Do not farms. Uh, Guardian underwater temples. Do they change the at all? Yeah, they did. They changed, but I don't know. Mods haven't told us anything about, like, the bounding boxes of them. So mm. I'm going to assume that it's the same. But again, it makes it more difficult because they aren't telling us this. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the only thing that I that, that I would have a problem with is, like, the farm places like the ocean monuments and stuff how would we adapt to put farms on them because mm -hmm. that's, that's the only way we can make a guardian farm mm. so i think physically like just looking at the surface it looks a lot nicer and but it is harder in a lot of aspects i mean like even gathering wood i found is actually harder than it is normally because the tree filler plugin really does not work very well as well as it should be Agreed. So, like, like even in like dark oak forest where you have like these massive like towering trees that I uh, that you can just grab wood from, it takes longer than you would in originally where you just had like all these tiny trees because tree feller just took them on an instant where you actually have to mine through the big trees and to get all the wood from all those. So it's it's more difficult in some instances. I mean, because I, I don't know where I am a lot of time. I don't know what biome I'm in. I don't know what I can do. Like, with all the new caves and stuff, I don't know where I can find things, like, if something's rare or not. It's just all very new, and it's, it's hard to understand and to, to get your grip on. People are what do you mean um... by, <laughs> by the, the trough full. Mm -hmm. I, I should stop talking. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the, speaking of, uh, different terrain, uh, have you been keeping up with the 1.18 snapshots by any chance? I've seen a little bit, like, just what things come up on, like, the subreddits and stuff, uh, like, all the really big mountains and stuff. And what do you think about it so far? I, I'm a fan. Like, like, with the custom terrain and stuff, like, it's all really massive and kind of hard to get used to, but... With this one, really, it just it seems like it's changing the mountains. I mean, the mountains, it, they're just making them look a lot nicer. I really love how the rivers are becoming a lot uh, a bit wider. And it is kind of difficult, I mean, now getting used to all this and changing the, the base terrain of Minecraft, the base game of Minecraft. Uh, but I do like the way it's going, and I do like how everything's turning. Sounds good. Uh, would you say you're excited for it, or is it kind of eh, you don't have big feelings on it? I I mean, it's it's another update, uh, but I the thing I am really excited for with that update uh, in particular, the only thing I'm super excited for is the increased world height. I think that's going to be really cool to, to mess with. Be right uh, back, I just need to use the washer. All right. Uh, but with the, the world height, I mean, that's going to have a lot more possibilities when it comes to building and all that. And the mountains and, and are really cool. The caves, I'm not too big about. I mean, personally, I do like the smaller caves. I think it's, it's uh, easier to travel around them and the, the light things up and to find where all the ores are. Because the big caves, they look cool, 
But I think from like a mining perspective, they're going to be a lot more difficult to, to get ores and stuff. Because then you got to like travel all the way to the ceiling and the ceiling's like 90 blocks in the air. So it's going to be difficult to get like coal and stuff. Yeah, but that part would be annoying. But also it's like the ground is a lot and walls, there's a lot more exposed blocks. So there are two. So yeah, so like the ceiling ores would be difficult, but uh, the rest of them might be mm -hmm. nice. It might be easier. It, it I mean, I haven't played any of it yet, so it's once I actually get in there and I play a lot of it, I think I'll I'll be able to form a better opinion. But mm -hmm. right now, I'm kind of excited, not too excited. It it really depends. Um, now since we're talking about like the Minecraft updates, what would you say is your least favorite, either singular edition or update as a whole to Minecraft? Least favorite? I. I don't know if I really have a least favorite update. And every update adds something more to the game. It's been great to see all of them. So I'd have to say, well, what was the first update? Is it like number one? That's the one point. Oh, that added the end and enchanting. Yeah, but didn't have a lot. So if yeah, that's the worst one. I mean, that's kind of. All right, then. I mean, every, every update after that added something to the game. So, I don't like that update because it doesn't have a lot. That, I that, mean, the end okay. wouldn't exist without it. I mean, yeah, but it also doesn't have, like, bees. Bees are cool. Yeah, I guess, like, uh, it's more kind of, like... As it goes on, you not only have the new features, but you also have the old features, so I guess they kind of, yeah. like, have more uses. So yeah, the game just gets bigger and bigger as it, each update progresses, and with it larger, I think it becomes a better game altogether. So like with one point fourteen, all that was bees, but I mean it still has every update after it. So I think that update as a whole is much better than like the first update because that doesn't update doesn't have a lot to it. I mean it had the end and enchanting, but I mean it doesn't have the new Nether. It doesn't have like ocean biomes or any of that. And oh, I more so, sort of meant like the actual additions that it added. Like, 1.14, uh, the bees. Like 1.15 had the bees, 1.14 yeah, that, had the Yeah, that's the worst villages. one. That, that's the worst one by 1. far. 1.15? Yeah, just the bees. I, if we're talking about strictly, if we had the, the do the, oh, there was only the additions, what it would add to the game and nothing else. Yeah, that, I mean, it's just bees. Yeah, and that is they, quite... And like they're cute, but I mean, like, I I've died to bees multiple times. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think that's I don't think that's the bees' fault. I think that's your fault. That's the bees' fault. The bees made me hit them. But why? How? What? They 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 looked at me wrong. They they, they're, they're, <laughs> they they're only just, look one way. Yeah, I mean they they harassed me. They they Still they, they they griefed my home. Okay. It was a really sad experience. You weren't there for it. You wouldn't understand. Okay, people are uh, quite big fans of honey. Some people. No. Yeah, honey in the redstone community is amazing. Have you have you opinion. heard the sound honey makes when you drink it? I I do hate that so much. It's okay, so, that's all you need to know. I mean, I play with sounds off like at zero percent all the time. Like, anyway, why? So First of all, you don't play with shaders twenty four seven, and next you you don't you you don't use sound. Yeah. Why? Kinda Why do you not use sound? Oh, that sound is. I mean, I guess that's kind. Of, well, I say realistic, but the game it's like a, a cubic meter of honey. Solid honey isn't really realistic either, but like. The sound, the stickiness, I guess it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you fell I... in a cubic meter of honey, would you take fall damage? I don't think so. You would. Well, you actually, you, would. I, I don't think slime reduces. Yeah, I don't think it, it, it does. Fall. I don't think it. Yes, honey does not. Slime does, but slime. Does. Does. I don't think it does. I don't know if honey. No, because honey stops you from jumping. So if anything, it'll be. No, but if you land like a hundred blocks high from a block of honey, I don't think. You you'll uh, die. You'll I'm un I'm unsure if that'll make you take fall damage. 
Um, it should. Okay, well, let's keep the conversation going while I quickly hop in game and test. <laughs> So yeah, bees are terrible, and I hate them. I mean, I hate them in real life. In game, they're a lot cuter, but I mean, I still hate them. I mean, they're just bad altogether. In in real life, bees are pretty freaking awesome. I would say. I I hate bees in real life. Bees are the worst bug. Bees are life. bees or wasps, because you can't give bees the the bees. You can't give bees, bees shit. Wasps are the basically the same thing. No, but they're not. Bees do wasps. more to the environment, but I I mean if. If I had to choose between getting stunned by a bee and the end of humanity, I would choose in the end of the humanity. I don't want to get stunned by a bee. I'm you fine sicko. With, with flying and dying and failing, and all You're the bees going if, if I had to deal with getting stunned. I mean, wasps, bees, mosquitoes, all of them, they, any needle-related bug, it just needs to go. Them and spiders. Oh. I mean, just bugs all together. We we gotta get rid of all bugs. All bugs are bad. But then, okay, I've just confirmed you do indeed take fall damage from honey. But you it die. Seems, but, but it seems to be slightly reduced. Well, At like a hundred blocks, you you went down to like half a heart without armor. So like a hail, like a hail, a hay bale. Uh no, hay bales reduce like an eighty-five percent to fall damage. This removes like uh. It's not as good as the hay bale. The but... mines, if you had to choose between the end of all agriculture and the end of Earth altogether and being stunned by a bee once, which would you choose? Well, I've never been stung by a bee, so I don't know what it feels like, but I don't want to I, I'd have to guess either. pretty bad. It doesn't, to... hurt. it doesn't hurt that much. Who are you? I mean, unless say? you're severely allergic and you might well, die anyway. Yeah, but... Are you severely allergic to bees? I don't know. I haven't been stung. Oh, uh, maybe I could go and I go outside and find out. Yeah, do that. Yeah, go get stunned by a bee. All right, I'll be right, right, right back, guys. I'm gonna go get myself stunned content. by a bee. Have EMS on speed dial. Mm -hmm. Um, end of humanity. I don't want to be stung by a bee. You, you guys see, 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 see this. See, ninjas, you're just wrong. You don't. I mean, anyway, wrong. if it's the end of humanity, you're gonna die anyway. I mean, I don't think. I mean, would you rather deal. starve to death or be stung by a bee once? Stung by a bee once. Starving to death is. I, I painful. can't believe you. I once like did. Uh, there was uh, uh, like a challenge where you went on like a two day hike and you didn't eat food at all. And why, why is a challenge? I don't know. I, I found it quite fun, but uh Why? Hunger hunger does like the Do difference you... between hunger and starving, when you're starving, it's it's physically painful. Well, yes, mm. that's what I mean I mean it's not like is. oh no, I haven't eaten in a day or something. Like it actually hurts. Well yes, I would assume so. Well, okay, yeah. you you can't really explain it. You gotta experience it to know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I'd rather get stung by a bee. I, I can't believe this. I mean, I, I think we need to get rid of all bees. Just, just get rid of them. They're or How would I the mean, world survive they're, to, like, the mass pollinators? I mean, can we just do it ourselves? I mean, I think we can do that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty I, sure I, mean, I can touch a flower than touch another flower, okay? Yeah, no, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, bees, I mean, kick them all they're down, all right? I mean, we gotta get rid of all bees. Just, just get rid of all of them. Gone. They don't need to be here. I didn't invite them. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they should be gone. I don't. I don't think we need them as a planet. Uh, okay, confirmed. Submadoge hates uh, bees and boo. Yeah, too. Pretty, I don't know. I mean, okay. Well, I guess other than like honey, well, what are they called? Bee nesters, honey farmers, not honey farmers, but like people who take care of bees. I, I don't know. Is that a thing? By the honey way, did you, guys, I know. did you guys know like, that this video is sponsored by Honey? You, you <laughs> wow. can save oh, that would have been a really good segment. That is you literally save on... free money. Yeah, it's free money. Did you know? I, I mean, wish if, this was actually. I, if you just if you click the link cool. down in the description right there, I it's just it's a Chrome extension. I mean, right here in the top right corner of Chrome, I mean, you just gotta click that, and you can save on anything. I mean, I use anything honey you want to buy. Time. I use Honey every day of my life. Who doesn't I, love free money? 
Who doesn't love free money? Okay, but real talk here, honey fucking sucks. I, I love honey. Honey is my favorite works. Chrome extension. Yes, I mean, yes, I, I added if honey you put, several If you times. put in our code, TG Media, you could save 10% now off your first purchase of honey. <laughs> no, no, but and like, yeah, for real talk, honey I installed it. Mm-hmm. Like headphones, mouses, keyboards, anything you want. I mean, honey, can, I you it. can save. Okay, so my dad, you're a bit too committed to this now. <laughs> We're gonna have to terminate you before you start. Click on the yeah, but like, right uh, yeah, yeah, like as like what Ninja was saying, I installed it a couple times, and it, like, I've never gotten a discount from it. Yeah, I, I I've love used... honey. I and I yeah. love putting our code into the into the thing. To save more today, free money. I mean, I've never met anyone who, that where, like, obviously, like it wouldn't be sponsored by this many YouTubers, I guess, if it didn't work. Like us, we're sponsored. Like, we love being sponsored. Right, I, I'm, I'm gonna put, uh, or whoever uploads it, uh, let, let's put honey in the description. You mm-hmm. know, let, let, but we only want the best for our TG podcast our viewers. viewers. Mm-hmm. I, I love money so much. Just <laughs> go find some small YouTuber and just consistently take their discount codes, and then you might actually get a discount from Honey. Otherwise, yeah, you, don't. It's no, not, it's no, not don't use other YouTubers. Use ours, our code for Honey that we have. We're we're not sponsored by Honey. We, you gotta let this go, Submadoj. I can't let it go. You've gotta let have. it go, Sub. That's all I have. Submadoj has gone insane. So true. Yeah, another thing I haven't talked about. I I really I dislike Boog. Boog is an issue. I don't like. Him. Okay, well, fuck okay. you. Fuck yeah, you. F- fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, Sub Madoge. This is my cast. I get to talk about what and, I want, and, and I, 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 I right hate now. Boog. No, no, fuck you. You're wrong. You're Boog, wrong. Boog is terrible. In the podcast, uh, who, who, have you even this seen? Is, this has been the, episode the, the animated. Have you ever even seen the, the new open season? I don't think you have. Have I what? It, have you seen the hit animated movie open season? I don't think you have. Anime or I animated? Have. It's it's a terrible movie. It's the worst movie. You're I've a ever terrible seen. movie. I... Amazing. Really, really? The comeback of the century. <laughs> he does it all. Tamiz, you can't he's say. He's been that. destroyed. This is my. Wait, I was gonna say this is my least favorite podcast episode, but I'm a host, so <laughs> I'm supposed to be biased and like it. You know, uh, because like one of the qualifications of being a TG podcast host is being biased as shit. So really, I can't say I, that. I, I never... cannot say that this podcast sucks. Really, I, I, I sub my doge. Sucks, I would. I, can I, say I would say that this podcast sucks. I can say that because my cast, and I can say yeah, true. It does suck. Mm-hmm. So I would. <laughs> no, anyway. I'm just gonna leave that behind. Not gonna okay, we, we let, let's move on. We got a, okay. A, so a now that power. we've talked about why Seb my Doge's opinion doesn't matter, <laughs> you know we got a big tower. I mean, we're currently like living off the streets right now, but Nino Nino's making a big tower. For oh wait, media. do we actually have the TG Media building yet? Yeah, Nino designed it. He he's is it built on survival? Nope, it is not. We okay. are homeless. Uh, we are homeless. recording. We're actually recording this off the streets. Uh, but, yeah, I'm I'm literally sitting on the street right now. But I like... I, I would say that we're we're doing this on the streets. But I mean, Pe- Perseverance doesn't have any streets, so we're just sitting in the grass. Yeah. Prosperity. Prosperity. I mean, I, I'm sitting in the grass, but like also I you, had you a know house if if the town is called Prosperity, why is it shortened the Perry? If it was shortened the Perry, then the town name should be Perseverance. Yeah, yeah. If, if you call it Perry, then fuck you. We all know it's Proop. Proop on top. Yeah, that's what I say. Proop. Proop. Because it's obviously the superior town name. I, I can't like why is it called Perry? Who named it Perry? Because yeah. I, I did perseverance as Perry. An anthropomorphic platypus, probably. So I every time I hear the word Perry, I, I think the word is perseverance, but no, it's prosperity. Well, prosperity. Prosperity. I mean o- opportunity was called Oppo, and curiosity was called Curio. And superiority started with soup, so it's called soup. Oh wait, I mean, what's it called? What's, the, what's the this town called now? Prosperity, Proop. Prospo, Prospo. Proop. I say Proop. Yeah, Proop. Yeah, Proop is the best name. Yeah, Proop, proop or so. Poop. I say either. 
T- TG yeah. Media officially, uh, it's Proop now. We we support yeah. naming it Proop. TG well, Media yeah. endorses the nickname Proop. I mean, no one yeah. ever calls the Ninos towns by their actual names. So true. Like, no. I have not once said superiority unless I'm writing, like, either fan fiction or something, like, official. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. Uh, I, I think in the Swag Awards, I even called it soup in the... Or was it superior? I, I don't know. But, like, yeah, unless it's been something like that, I've always called it soup. And I actually, there was a couple times I actually forgot the name of the town, and I just thought it was soup. And I, yeah. I, I, I was shocked by the fact that it was called superiority, because it's called soup. That's its name. Well, soup. Superiority. Yeah, but it's just soup. No one calls it superiority. It's, it's yeah, not a name. It's not real. Yeah, superiority is like six syllables, is it? Superiority. Yeah, six. I think that's six syllables. Yeah, six syllables. That's a one. Soup is superiority or one. Mm-hmm. Per- it, it's a better name. Cross. I, you, you know what? Yeah, and, and Perry is Perry two is syllables. Two. It's two. Yeah, uh, so Pro- Proop is Pro- even a better Pro- nickname. Pro- Pro- it's objectively better, better. It is. Proop is oh, a, such a great name. We, we, we stand Proop. Proop stand. I, got, I love Proop. Speaking I of love. towns, there are not a lot of towns on 1.17, and it's kind of sad. What about yeah, Astral? I, I think... Or... Oblivion. Because like most Oblivion people, now. after looking at Proop, it's just kind of how do you compete with it? They got every like every major farm set up in like a week. Th- yeah. There's you could just join it, and there's no real reason. Like uh, unless you just join a server, a town for fun. But most people don't join it for fun. Most people join towns because of the benefits. Yeah, and I think that a lot I know of the- I I joined uh, Curiosity. For the benefits, and then like eventually... curiosity because everyone else did it. Uh, yeah, well, but like uh... I didn't join curiosity. I joined Ghost Town. That was the only town I joined. I joined mm-hmm. Spirit City and stayed with Spirit City for a while, but I never built a house in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been in a couple towns. I've been in, I was in Coralston, I, I guess, which is a really weird town. I still don't know what that was, but apparently I was a citizen of that. Yeah. Do, you, do you even remember what, what Corston was? Because because I don't. It was it was made by Dragon. I remember that. And it was Dragon this, Elect. No way. Who's with Dragon? What? Like Dragon AM? I think was that. Is that their name? I don't know. Okay. But yeah, they they made this town. Oh yeah, uh, Archerhead too. It was Archerhead and uh, Dragon. Oh, Archerhead. I haven't heard that name in a million years. Well, in a million hours. I don't know. In a yeah, long he, time. He joined like yesterday. He he's still around. I've uh, been on a while. Can't believe it. Uh, but yeah, they made this town like just in this mountain. And if you joined the Discord, you became a citizen. You didn't have to build like a house there or write your name down on anything. If you joined the Discord, you were a citizen. So I accidentally became a citizen, of course. Then you accidentally and... became a citizen. Mm-hmm. So I was a citizen of that and Grog's Town one point sixteen. And I think, like, on some list, I'm technically a citizen of superiority, even though I wasn't. I didn't live there. I just built a library there. I mean, well, I, think I mean, that that's kinda... still a build. So, because yeah. E- even if it's not building, like, Nino only cares if it's, like, a building. Even yeah. if it's not. Plus, but like, I it's still, like, citizen. contributing to uh, soup as a town. So I yeah, guess yeah. it kind of works. The library is cool. I like that place. I mean, yeah, the library was pretty cool, I think. Yeah, you want to talk about that on the, the Subma cast? Because it's my cast, and it's not about yeah, me sure. and nothing else. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it was, it was a library. All, let it be known, Subma Doge is a uh, self-centered bitches, bitch-aloid. I am. Bitch-aloid? Okay, that is a word I have never heard. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great word. We should add it to the <laughs> yeah, I'm the True, Subma Doge is a bitch-aloid. There's it's no like, more guests on the TG podcast. Only me. I'm the guest every only time. Only Dodge. Now I'm the CEO. I get to make the big decision. It's not a coincidence that all of the hosts of the TG podcast are on the list to become guests. <laughs> yeah. Of course not. TG yeah, media I mean, is not biased at all. Yeah. Uh, we are actually the least biased people. In an article that I myself wrote... 
uh, but haven't released anywhere, but just take my word for it. Um, I so was voted, we were voted number one in the least corrupt uh, admins. So we were. Yeah, it's, it's we true. were. That got we, that was we, on we the flag. Ourselves as the least corrupt admins. The least corrupt admins. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know um, how to feel about that one, Demise. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually. Yeah, the the library to talk about that. That was yeah. I, I built a lot of things. I made a lot of books. I wrote them all down, put them in one place, and I mm -hmm. realized like at the end of one point sixteen, I found one book that wasn't in the library, and I couldn't put it in, and it was really yeah. Sad. I remember now that yeah, wouldn't let me. Now that you're mentioning it, I do remember the library. That yeah, was, and it was in all the books. I always thought that was a really cool idea. It is. Uh -huh. It was a great idea. A, a perfect idea, even. Thank you. Yeah. I had quite bad experiences with lecterns. And... Oh, I so, love lecterns. Uh, well, I think you're just wrong. You can use them for redstone. Uh, you can use them for... Okay, yeah. yeah. Speaking, yeah. speaking of that... Redstone, that's yeah. my problem with it. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell a story. So, um, uh, in Anarchy, uh, uh, what, what was it? The Slash Spawn group, we had this really big base, you know, tons of it was where it was the most by far the most valuable thing on the server more than astral's riches because it was like a bunch of us there was all of the custom items we had like several shulkers of custom items anyway uh and tons of gear like yeah, at least, yeah, uh, reflecting. yeah you, you guys know that so we were gonna announce at the end of anarchy the cords to the base so people could come uh, so I rigged the entire thing with a shulker of TNT oh, and uh, made yeah. it so anyone who opened certain shulkers or chests would cause the entire thing to explode. So I um, did the same thing with PvP, but then somebody preemptively mm -hmm. blew it up. No, but the thing is, it would have been undetectable. You could, even if you free cammed, you wouldn't be able to see the TNT because it was all like packed together. You cannot see. The blocks oh, I see. and uh it wasn't every shulker it was only certain ones so people would let their guard down um oh, anyway so i realized that i never read demise escapes prison the oh second god part i of... just Did yeah and we had a letter there, there with the <laughs> without with our favorite fan fictions and that one was one of there and because tit never told me that he released it so i didn't read it so when I saw it, I'm like, wow, this is the end of uh, 1.16 Anarchy. Let me read it. <laughs> and to keep in mind that directly under it was, was all TNT. of the TNT in the base is linked. So yeah. I open it, I read it. First book, no redstone signal. I flip to the next book. I'm halfway through reading it. Boom, a shulker of TNT explodes and the entire base is gone. All of I made sure to rig the chest and stuff <laughs> as well. So all of the gear inside the chest would be blown up as well. And mm -hmm. yep. uh, that was, I hated that so much. Ooh, that that makes absolute like, sense. Like you saw the announcement Bomo put in uh, Soup about the oh. thing being blown up. No, I don't check announcements very often. Uh, okay, I'll send it to you later. But um, yeah, that was me. That uh, It would have been perfect if I just didn't decide to... Um, if I just didn't to decide read. to read the book, Reading that made read. me so mad. So yeah, just on a, a lesser note, uh, yeah, Hypesy put a bomb in the library and hooked it up to. Oh, library. he did. He did, and it, it 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 hurt Benny, and that was it. That that was the story. A lot less cooler than yours, but he did. That's why he was really sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the library is cool. I I I wrote. All of TGN's Bizarre Adventure in one go, and that took, I think, four or five hours cool. of just straight transcribing for a, a, a book that took over, I think, six books for one book, all 100 pages each. Speaking of, TGN's Bizarre Adventure, out now, you should read that. It's a great book. Yeah, TGN's cool. Bizarre. Mm -hmm. Oh no. We have a question from one of our viewers. Uh Hypesy. He says, at Samadoge, thoughts on touching grass. Touching grass, I haven't left my home in years. Uh so I'm very against it. 
I think grass is sharp and it hurts. So no. I think the correct answer is one year and a couple of months because that's how long you've been in TG. And as we all know, TG takes away your will to live. It does. I would I mean, say that's I'm correct. Like, like what yeah. I said in uh, Soup General yesterday, if TG dies, I do too. <laughs> Uh, if TG dies, I will become so much healthier as like a person. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I, uh, I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> if if TG we all know that end, won't happen. And if we don't TG want were to the happen. end, all, everyone would be benefited. No one would lose in that situation. I, I mean, <laughs> he's not wrong. I kind of wish someone would do something in TG that pisses me off so much that I just leave everything. That, like, then I have the like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to go get Tit to write the sequel to Demise Escapes Prison to only put it in one book. I will show you the book and throw it into fire. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the title should be Demise Escapes Alcatraz. I mean, that's basically the same thing as Demise. I know, but Demise Escapes Prison was beautiful. I, I don't think I... Uh, I've never I think read I think I cannot thank Tid enough for writing that. That was really good. Never if read, you it, never read it. I highly suggest I, reading it. I've got Actually, to say, I wasn't a, a, a big fan of that really book. Cool. I was not a big fan. Oh. I, I I have to say that I think the Mize Escapes the IRS was much better than the Mize Escapes Prison. Uh, well, yeah, I did think it was better, but I still liked both. I don't know. And I I think like, that the Mize Escapes Prison it it stuck too far off of what the Mize Escapes the IRS originally was. And it kind of threw away its own morals and own way of going to to forward the story more. That was the second time I ever beat Nude in chess. We ha I've played like 50 or so games with him. I have only one win, and that was when he let me win to explain something. Joe? So you just, yeah. you're admitting, mm -hmm. you're like publicly admitting that you're not focusing on the podcast and instead are playing chess with Jeanut. You are? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not playing now, but I just remember this. Are you, are you currently playing chess with Jeanut? I cannot confirm or deny that. I, I can't believe you are currently playing chess with Jeanut. Wow, well, that... I mean... That <laughs> is... That's sad, man. It is. It's terrible. It is and, terrible. Yeah, also, I, I talked to Tim about that, actually. He... I, I th uh, there was one time Tit and Zhao were playing chess one day, and uh, Tit lost. So really, he, he did. So he vowed for that, and any book he could write possible, he would include Zhao and have him lose a game of chess because of that. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that. That's amazing. So in that is... in T in Demise Escapes Prison. And TG High, I believe he loses a game of chess because Tib wanted to do that. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another one. I, I think there's another. That seems third. like a very Tit thing to do. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's great. It, it I, is. I, I love it. I, I honestly didn't know. I just thought they put it like that for, uh, you know, uh, funny. Irony. Funny sake. No, he, he made it so he, he'll never win a game of chess in the book ever. It's, <laughs> it's great. Uh, But yeah, that's, right. that's really cool. There's a that's lot of cool books on the server. I, I could give a review on every single book. Yeah, people are surprisingly creative. Yeah, and I don't um, think no one reads enough books. There's there's a whole lot of them. 1.16. 1. Yeah, it's like people will more. only read uh, Actually, books read if it's in a, in a in a block game. So true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just copy paste all of like uh, Moby Dick or whatever. Mm -hmm. And... Um, just uh, it put it into and Minecraft and have people. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've read I, all the books. I think I've read at least a majority of all books written on TG at 1.15, 1.16 TGN. And I could give a review on all of them. I mean, I think it, they're, it's really cool, some of the books that have been written. I mean, cause, I mean some of them are, I mean, have been, are just reusing stuff and are really boring but some of them have been really cool like tg high i i like that one a lot i, I love that book series it, until it got to the end and then when i liked it until i died in it <laughs> that was a you, you tg high I, I, yeah. I just I, complained I once and then mario disintegrated me with his laser eyes or something
those battles, not battles, but blage. I'm, I'm just waiting for the day I get into. DJI ended, did he not hear? Did it's it? Over. Oh, right. Ahead. He said he's going to like restart it or something, right? Yeah, he, he's rebooting. So, so the ending of CGI is, is terrible. I, I'd say what, it's. What happened? They, at the very end, they like all the main characters start fighting Mario. And then, like a Deus Ex Machina, like Mario just died because like Avalon stepped in. And like Avalon? Uh, Avalon. I Isn't that like name. Newfie 2? Yeah. So like Crystal Panda. And I think Frost Maverick. I forgot. Oh, it actually yeah. was. I think it might have been the mice. I'm actually gonna go read that. But basically, no, I, I, I do not think I w- I was not in TG High yet. Well, apparently you didn't read the last chapter. So how would you know? Did did I? Did I not? Apparently, I not. remember reading the post about him saying he's gonna reboot it, but I do not. That was in the last chapter. That was in the last chapter. Yeah, I would. I for sure was not in it. Uh, but yeah, it... or like at least I'm like fairly certain I wasn't. So I'm back, I'm on the wiki right now. I'm actually going to read real quick who it was. No, it was Crystal Frost and Zeg, not not Demise. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I forgot his Zeg abandoned yeah, suit and diff, 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 different bed game member. Uh, but yeah, they they came in and then just like killed Mario, and. Turns out Mario was actually not dead, and he used a reset charge from Loki and ended the timeline. Loki? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it, it, it is said by name that he used a research, reset charge from the hit TV show Loki and ended the <laughs> timeline. That is, that is quite bizarre. And that's how it ended. It, the, wow. it was pretty terrible. I mean, I, mean, I don't remember. Ended in worse ways. Like, TGN's Bizarre Adventure, I love that book. TGN's Bizarre Adventure is one of the best books ever written in the history of TGN, TG, whatever. It, it's got a great story, it's got great characters, great stance, and all of everything. It's, it's a, I'd say, almost a perfect book. But it has one issue, that it just stops. And that's it. In the last chapter, they go into a house, and, like, this dude walks up to him, and that's it. That's the entire series. And it just ends. It's very sad. Damn. So, there's that. So that book doesn't end very well. TG High doesn't end very well, because I just used a reset charge and said, yeah, I'll reboot the series. Oh, yeah, of course. And like, I think that like on my my top three, like the best books ever in, it's that one, those two, and I think Frost Panda's third. And Frost Panda hasn't been updated in forever, so it just kind of ends as well. CG books need to end more. They need they need proper endings. That's that's a big issue plaguing the server today. I should write a manifesto on that. <laughs> you should. Define mm. manifesto. Hmm? Define manifesto. A a book that talks about why everyone else is bad and why your opinion is right. And why everyone else should think we, that you about your thoughts and <laughs> I see. So hands. when someone says communist manifesto, it's really why communism is better than any other government system. It, it's it's written by Karl Marx, so it's why Karl Marx is right and you are wrong, and that that's the book. And that is its see. defining quality. I've written it several hundred times. I you've probably. written it or read it both you've written it several hundred times <laughs> yeah what i i was there i'm not gonna back, question it back in uh, uh 1782 world war 1.5 yeah um I'm 1847 to... <laughs> i was there what what happened in 1847 the plague. Oh. Which plague? <laughs> the uh, the red one. The the red one? The the red plague. That one. Scarlet fever? 
whatever. Sure. This is off. Yeah. This is insanely yeah. off topic. Yeah, it was I have no idea what you guys I, yeah, are talking I about. I have no idea what we're talking about either. My, the Mize, have you not heard about the plague? The plague? The plague? You mean the one that's like around today? The eight, the 1847 plague? No. 1847. That one? Yep. Uh, I have no, no. He Probably no. should. Because I know about the plague. Maybe I don't know. I don't really pick. Wait, is I don't know if you're talking about something real or something in TG lore anymore. It's the lore of TG. Sure, sure, yeah. I I I don't know it. That's a lot of awkward silence. Okay. Yeah, there, I mean, there's gonna, always gonna, I'm gonna look up if there if there is a plague in the 847. I'm gonna look up the 1847. Oh, plague. you were just you were okay, just making I, shit up. Yeah, yeah. 1847. I plague. thought you were like. No, nope, I had no idea what I was talking about. A uh, typhus. Yep, it was typhus. No, I wasn't joking. Okay, oh. if we need to research uh typhus epidemics, I think we're out of things. No, <laughs> no, I think it's time to research typhus. Okay. That would be an amazing idea. Uh, it's my village in the history of the typhus plague. Yeah, okay. The disease oh. caused by rick ricketesia, or orienta bacteria. You can get it from mites and fleas or lice. Modern hygiene has mostly stopped it, but it can still happen in places where bad sanitation is bad, or if it gets passed where by... bad sanitation is bad? Mm-hmm. What about in places where bad sanitation is good? <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. Murphy and typhus is passed by fleas to people and flea bites. Infected animals, mainly rats. Most cases in the United States have been reported in California, Hawaii, and Texas. Epidemic awesome. typhus is a rare variety spread by infected body lice. It's unlikely to happen outside of incredibly crowded living conditions. One type of epidemic type, type yep. It can be spread by infected flying squirrels, but it's too. Wait, okay, wait a minute. It can, flying it, squirrels? Wait, it, it can be infected by flying squirrels? That That's it? That's the only way to get epidemic typhus is from a flying squirrel? I, I'm trying to imagine, it's like you're just walking in like a forest, and... Like, oh shit, suddenly, a flying squirrel. Looks like, like I'm gonna get epidemic typhus. Yeah, and you just get like bombed by flying squirrels. Boom, you have epidemic typhus. Too bad, I guess. Too bad for you. You you got bombed by by a flying squirrel, and now you have epidemic typhus. Yeah. This has been a great episode. Of the TG it really has. This has been a, a great episode. Being I, really I, random. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how we like it here on the TG. I, podcast. I wish we could talk more about epidemic typhus, but I thought we might have to. I think end we're it. out of time. We're out of time. It's been like two hours. Yeah. We, we can't talk about epidemic typhus no more. No more epidemic typhus. We're going to have to dedicate the entire next episode to epidemic typhus. Who's, who's typhus the guest cast. this time? Well, we'll have Nino on the cast, and we'll, oh. we'll talk about nothing but epidemic typhus. Alrighty. We, we, we won't have acknowledged that he's there. Nothing but epidemic typhus. Yeah. Can't wait. Well, that's been episode 14 of the TG Podcast. Good. I'm 100 Ninjas here with our uh, guest Summadoge and my uh, my co-host Demise. We've got, a, we've got a nice outro now. You got a, it's probably, it might be playing right now. I might be talking over the outro. Yeah, but, it, it, it's pr pl probably playing right now. It's yeah. made by Blue Spectator. We, we're we're going to have like an end screen, maybe. We're going to hire someone to make an end screen with this oh, outro. Okay. One thing I do kind of want to know how many people actually listen to the not live version. So this is gonna be yeah. like a YouTuber line. But if you are watching, can you just comment uh, saying sub my doge sucks? Did you actually know that like sixty percent of our viewers are not subscribed? So if you could just actually, I'm fairly certain on one before. episode, a hundred percent of the viewers weren't subscribed. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm not subscribed. Did to you know that 100% of our viewers are not subscribed? Mm -hmm. 
Did you know that there's a glitch going around YouTube right now where you they, you might be unsubscribed from our channel, so you could just scroll down there and hit that subscribe button. And Question, be sure was that, that an actual... Also, to hit that like button and that, that notification bell. Be sure to click the all button. Join the notification squad. Not just squad. personalized, but be sure to join the notification squad. <laughs> uh, also, donate to our Patreon. Uh, and be sure to, Patreon? And to, to click that uh, link to the honey page. Be sure to put in our, our code, TG Media. Uh, to get 10% off We're your next We're not sponsored just, by Honeyman, uh, you've got to let it go. Also, no guarantee that the code will work, but if you go to any website, uh, type TG Media in the promo link, and we promise you it might fail and it, or it might succeed. Oh, oh I, forgot, I, I forgot to talk about that. Did you know that NordVPN can oh my God. change your location? Shut up, okay? You, you can change on... on Shows like Netflix, like I, I'm not allowed to see shows that you could see in like England. And with our sponsor NordVPN, you could you could watch those shows. Shut up about NordVPN. Uh, NordVPN is our the sponsor of today's episode. I'm uh, pretty be sure, sure we've already ended our the podcast. Code, TG Media. We've not ended the podcast. We had to talk about our sponsored segment. Uh, be but sure to put that outro. in. We did we did the outro like an hour ago. You had to redo the outro. Do it again. Do it better. I just this time. did it like two do, minutes do it, ago. Do it do it better this time. What do you mean do it better? Okay. Do it do it better. The, well this has been the TG podcast with me, a hundred ninjas, and our guest Samba Doge, along with our amazing co-host, Son of Demise. Thank you for listening. <laughs>